the bridge collapse in Baltimore is likely to have widespread impacts across the United States. It's one of the country's major shipping ports, particularly for vehicles. Emma Rebellato explains. Well, the Francis Scott Key Bridge is a landmark bridge. It's a major east coast artery spanning just over two and a half kilometres. Drivers who are travelling north and south between major eastern US cities like New York and Washington often use this bridge to avoid the city of Baltimore. Now they won't have a choice, which means other roads will be clogged. More than 30,000 vehicles use this bridge every day, upwards of 11 million every year. So this collapse is going to cause huge problems for shipping as well. One expert says there'll be dozens of diversions in the next week and hundreds in the coming months that could hit supply chains. Baltimore Harbour is the top American port for the import and export of cars, while coal exports are also set to be disrupted. That means a big impact on potentially thousands of jobs and costs and prices could go up. Emma Rebellato there. So how could such a major bridge collapse? Professor Benjamin Schaefer is a structural engineer at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore and joins us now. Uh, Benjamin, thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be here. Now, the vision that we've seen of this bridge collapse is, is extraordinary, almost unbelievable. Can you explain why, from an engineering perspective, the bridge collapse? Was it structurally sound or would any bridge have collapsed in this situation? Yeah, sorry, the, the story is not super complicated in that regard, right? Um, uh, but basically, any bridge would have collapsed with a cargo ship having a direct strike that's not stopped. Um, no, no real way around it. OK, so we know it's a steel megastructure. Are you aware if perhaps ageing infrastructure was at all uh, to blame in this? Yeah, so um, certainly something people have been discussing and, and trying to consider and understand. It is about a 50-year-old bridge. It was completed in 1977. Um, uh, bridges in the states are inspected uh, yearly, um, and its most recent inspection report indicated some minor issues with it being 50 years old, but nothing that would indicate uh, foundation issues or other structural issues that would um, uh, cause it to be, um, you know, have a particular fragility or something like that. So, I mean, the, the, it's the ship strike from an enormous ship that is uh, the reason that we see the bridge in the water today. OK, well, let's talk about that. That's what we know so far is that this cargo ship, it lost power, it went into the pylon. Was there protection around the pylon? And if not, should there have been? Yeah, so um, there is some protection in the harbour. Um, uh, in some of the videos, you'll see some small sort of cylinders uh, sticking out about, uh, you know, 100 metres off the bridge, um, uh, sort of making the shipping lane. Those are known as dolphins, and they're, they're intended, as I understand, from other sort of maritime experts to divert uh, the, the bridge. Um, but this, built was, this bridge was built before um, uh, a major accident that happened in the States in Tampa, Florida in 1980 that precipitated a lot of changes in the way we do bridge protection. And it doesn't seem to have the same kind of significant protection right at the piers that we see in some of the more modern bridges um, in other ports around the US. Is it possible to retrofit these older bridges with, with better safety mechanisms? Yeah, I think that's that's probably true. Um, uh, the, the, there's a, there's, there are physical solutions like this with bridge protection. Um, we're also talking about um, a, a boat that was as large as the bridge, so not a little boat and a big bridge, but... <laughs> A boat that's that's literally the same length and 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 spans as as the bridge itself, um, and so um, how we handle um, the people um, and the regulatory system around moving that boat around, um, probably as important as the physics of the steel that goes into the bridge. Yeah, so it's an extremely busy port. We've been speaking about the economic implications of that. It being a, a transport hub, particularly for the automotive industry. Um, what do you know about the concerns and if there were any about an event of this nature happening? Had there been any discourse in the, the years leading up to this about this potential happening? Aware of uh, all of the back, uh, you know, discussions that would have happened with the Port of Baltimore and, and the uh, state authorities and things like that with regard to any concerns they had. So I'm not really aware of anything like that. Mm -hmm. Certainly in the popular press, uh, this was not something that, that people were discussing as a particular concern, um, you know, prior to this event. So, Benjamin, do these types of bridges, the structures that we're seeing here, are they appropriate, the ones that have the, py the pylons that go directly into the harbour, are they appropriate for busy working harbours with, su with such huge uh, shipping cargoes, uh, uh, ships going through them? Yeah, so, I mean, um, uh, one could have a tunnel, uh, I suppose. Um, there are two tunnels not too far away, um, which have certainly avoids having a, a bridge further down the bay. 
um, uh, this same bay, uh, the Chesapeake Bay, there is another bridge and tunnel um, to provide uh, a shipping route. Um, but there are other concerns. So you have to have transport hazardous materials in that region. We don't allow them to go in the tunnels. They must go uh, in the bridges. That's essentially the only route for those types of materials. Um, and if you're going to build a bridge, um, you build it as long span as you can. The longer you make it, the more it costs. So they certainly had those supports out as, as far as they could in the water, um, balancing the economy and efficiency of, of that choice. Um, that choice was made in the early 1970s, and those ships have grown quite a bit. Maybe we will do it differently uh, as we as we rebuild um, the, a second time. Yeah, and I guess that's a, the last question being, you know, the engineering le le lessons from this. What should the new bridge look like? Yeah, so I, certainly we wouldn't rebuild exactly the same just from uh, straight economic conditions these days. We, we tend to build a, a different bridge, a, a cable-stayed bridge, um, one which has sort of major pylons and then and then cables uh, coming down to the supporting bridge would would be uh, probably the the more typical or economically uh, selected choice um, now, but there'll be a lot of concerns to make sure that the whole infrastructure system um, that that harbor port and bridge represent uh, are a solution, not just a bridge solution. Professor Benjamin Schaefer, structural engineer at Johns Hopkins University, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.